Got it. Okay, so here we go. House of Ashes. We're doing a thing. Yeah. This is going to be amazing. We're going to watch or play our way through the beginning of this game, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Everyone, this is Megan Sullivan from History and Games, and I am thrilled and terrified to be here because we're playing House of Ashes, and it's a horror game. <laughs> and it is a horror game. It's quite scary, um, but because I hate horror too. But it's it's kind of like a horror light. Yeah, horror light. And also it's a spooky season, right? Like Halloween is coming up as we're recording this. Exactly. It's almost here. It's almost so, here. I love that every choice has a consequence. It's my favorite thing that they put at the beginning of like every single game. Um, yeah. Okay, but. so for those who don't know, can you kind of explain the basic premise of House of Ashes? uh yeah so it's part of a series called the dark pictures anthology um essentially it's made by the same studio supermassive games that did until dawn um but like since that game was like a 10-hour playthrough it was super long people wanted to do it in one setting it was kind of overwhelming um and so they decided they were going to make a shorter series of games based off of like popular horror tropes and so they have two seasons planned of four games each. So we're supposed to get eight total. Now they're saying they might um, like do more, but we have no idea. Oh yes, then we're in a pod, you know, 2231. Um, and what is a pod? So, so a pod is the ancient, it's an ancient city uh, in the Akkadian uh, Empire. And uh, this is set during the reign of Naram Sin, who is one of the more famous kings. Um, and then the cool part of the history in it is that it's based off of kind of um, uh, an old account of something called the Curse of Akkad. And so it's essentially a way for the ancients to explain sort of the famine and the conflict that was going on uh, during this time period. So they basically, so so the game essentially said that Naram Sin essentially killed a lot of people and like um, like did that in service of the gods to build this beautiful temple. And so the game kind of says, okay, well, to do that, he sort of pissed off the, the, the demons below who are coming and like sort of um, causing like famine and plague. And so you have the Gutians who are like a sort of, a tribe who's native to sort of an area sort of north and uh, a little bit east and so they they're supposed to like come down in the mountains and they are sort of rebelling and fighting back against this evil oppressor who has like pushed them away and this is Naram Sin right now <clears throat> with this gorgeous mask I love his mask right I mean I just love all the costumes I mean look at that throne I want the throne. I do, I do too. I love the rosettes in the background. It's very Mesopotamian. Right. So this is his general, Bethulu. He's not a real character from history. He's just a game character, but it, he's cool. And his beard is so cool. Oh, yeah. I, obviously, they got it from all those reliefs from this time period. Yep. I like that they're committed to that. No matter. Right. I mean, the armor looks a little maybe not correct, but I'm not an expert in that. Starting with this one. But okay, so oh, okay, so I'm probably gonna have to play this. But so this is a captured Gutian wave girl, I guess. And unfortunately, um, he really wants to kill her as a sacrifice to the gods to lift the curse that has basically been like seven years of plague and famine and terrible things. What a tragedy this plague has been. That mask would be terrifying. The fact that you can yeah. only see the eyes. Um, okay, so I, well, um, we have a choice, but it's not really a choice. So we're gonna just um, maybe ask if we can keep her alive, just yeah, because that's so kind of be good. We have to try. Is the girl alive? She's an enemy scout. You could learn the Gutian. You could learn the Gutian's no. plans. Every drop of blood brings us closer to salvation. Nope. All right, we she... tried. <laughs> we tried. She must die. Oh. 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 oh my God, good times. Uh, yes. Also, just 
spoiler alert, because I don't like horror games, I do play on easy, so my click times are not quite as quick as the hardcore gamers, but, you know. So that's, that's why okay. they look a bit easier. Oh no. We're just trying to get through this. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's only the prologue, and I feel so terrible. I'm sorry! Oh. Oh. See, I feel so terrible having to do that, but like, I don't want to piss off the king. You impressed him though. He's clapping. I, I did impress him. <laughs> I'm like, I wish the hall weren't so dark, but like you can kind of see there's these great statues and these, these amazing Lamases everywhere. And I love Lamases and I want one desperately in my <laughs> house. I don't there know where I put it, but I want one. Now, uh, I and... noticed there's moon symbology, it looks like. Does that have to do with sin or did does that like he's got the bull as well? So the um, um, yeah, so it's all connected because ancient Assyrians, and, and let me preface this for your audience as well. Um, I am not an Assyriologist, right? This is not my specialty. So I'm going to get probably a lot of things wrong because I only have like one class that covers ancient Near East. But I did do my research when playing this game enough to know like basic things. But um, th th so a lot of like Assyrian gods are based off of like astrological things. And so the moon is um, like a big part of just like, uh, like the, the ancient astronomical prowess of the Assyrians. And, and I know that the moon was kind of ascribed to um, at least one of their gods. So it's, it, it is kind of like a, a popular symbol that they used. I should ask my Assyriologist friend, though, more about it, because she would know. I would love to have an Assyriologist friend. That'd be great. Well, I can introduce you. I know many people. That would be awesome. All right. So <laughs> kind of a grim start. Not surprising. So the, so the very grim start. Um, I will say, so I do know that the winged bull statues that are in here are called Lamassus. And they're a very popular motif, and they're supposed to project strength and projection, like, of royal kingly power. So they would be popular at any entrances. Um, and so it's basically the face of a man, stylized man with the stylized Assyrian beard, and then, the yeah, the wings and the body of a bull. And they're really cool, and I love them. They are amazing. I got to see those at the uh, Met a few years ago yeah. right before COVID hit and it's yeah. really impressive and like all of their sculptures released are huge yeah yeah this is too totally like inaccurate this 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 so this temple here was not like a real historical one this was just built for in the game and we're about to have an eclipse which is bad because yeah that, that's always that bad in ancient history Right? So we're like, oh, this is terrible. Something is happening. <laughs> then we get these weird sort of sequences of dark battle, which are very creepy. And we're like, we don't really know what's happening. What's going on here? Um, definitely, definitely super creepy. You know, we actually had an actual eclipse, as you know, like a week or yeah, so ago. And, with the and, like ring of fire. Yeah, the ring of fire. It is eerie. Like all of a sudden you're like, where's the light in the world? Yeah. Oh, yes. And then that was showing us that we've awakened some weird screamy thing in the depths of the cavern. Okay, so now we play this Gutian who has escaped, and we're going to try to escape the, the prison, and he's coming to find the king, but dun, dun, dun. What has happened? We come in very quiet in this room in the main temple, and... Naramsin is dead. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. He's been straight and up murdered. Like, it is murder, but who has done... Who has done the murder? <laughs> and now we can... Here comes creepy crawlies. Because something is happening. Yeah, so something, is somebody's VHS tape is getting all wacky. <laughs> it's like paranormal activity, but like ancient style. Exactly. <laughs> Uh-oh. What is this? Uh oh. So now we're running. And we're like, why are you here, my dude? Exactly. 
Maybe you shouldn't attack him if he's clearly like yeah, right. Something. He, he wasn't trying to kill you. What are you doing? Also, he's better oh. fighter than you apparently, so yeah. that didn't work. Oh yeah. So now that we've been hit in the back. Oh oh oh. And now we work together. Yay! Yay! What have you done to at least such gold? I mean, good question, but like, <laughs> seriously, what did you do that is the gods angry? Yeah. <laughs> so now here we get some exposition where Balasu explains that the king sacked the temple of the god Enlil at Nippur, which again is more legend. Even my daughter's death couldn't wake me to the truth. Because the real Naram Sin was said to have been a quite pious ruler, and he did not, he, like, yeah. So in the historical Curse of Akkad, written down in that, like, one random tablet, he was supposed to have, uh, so he's, suppo he's supposed to have waited seven years praying to the gods, being pious, and then he gets tired of having no answer from the gods as to why there's, like, plague in his kingdom, and so he goes and then sacks the Temple of Enlil in Nippur, which is one of the holy cities, and then technically, like, after he does it, then the god is supposed to have gotten angry and then told his, the other gods that uh, they could not bestow favor upon Naram Sin and his reign. Um, in, in repayment for this. And so that is all why like the Gudians come down and then destroy his kingdom. And it's all very dramatic, but it's very funny that it is not actually based off of anything. <laughs> actually, it's really cool. <laughs> but it's a very dramatic ancient story and it makes for a good modern adaptation. Right, it makes it, it looks a little more exciting, right? There, there's some, some things at stake. Yeah, basically. So, okay, so now that we're like, in this, because uh, we're going through the catacombs to try to go yes. out. What the build <clears throat> so. so we're going to learn some controls because this is the prologue and we can't skip the prologue controls. Um, but as soon as we finish the controls, we will be able to walk around this room and it actually examine the quad. Uh, this doesn't look oh, good. Oh, it's the heartbeat. <laughs> oh, no, it's the heartbeat shit. But because mine is set to easy, I don't have to do the double up. Is it, like a, is it like a rhythm game? Yeah, you're supposed to just press X in time on the heartbeat thing, and it's actually quite easy to mess up. Um, but also, since I'm playing on easy, they took... Like, you'd have more of those... You'd, you'd have more chances to fuck it up to, because you have to, like, press it in time if you're playing on a dip, more difficult setting. Right. Because usually it's, like, two of these next to each other in succession. Okay. Um, but when you're playing on easy, it's like one and they're quite spaced out. So it is actually a lot easier to succeed. Um, so that's why I'm not having trouble with it. But um, no, I, you watch so many playthroughs of this game on YouTube and you see so many people like suddenly fucking it up and then you know, someone dies. And you're like, <laughs> but the purpose of this stream is to observe the history and the setting, not to, you know, actually play the game because I'm not that hardcore gamer. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is a cockroach, I think. Okay, so now we can walk around and look at this really cool ancient setting. Yeah, so look, at look at that. Look at this wall art. Look at this Assyrian like tomb art. Oh, I recognize that art. Like, isn't this just the most gorgeous? It's always These so are, fascinating. Like Assyrian yeah, like the, kings. Yeah. It's like the winged demons and beasts. Yeah. Um, here, look, we're going to take a look at, this is a steely that we can look at. Oh, very cool. Look, it's got it's a got Lamassu the cuneiform. on it. Right? It's got accurate cuneiform. It's got really cool, realistic, like, carvings. Look, like, there's, a, like, a Lamassu on there, which I love. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, this is very cool. And so, with Velasu reading it, I think this might also be a Seely talking about the actual curse of Akkad, but I don't remember. I would have to, again, check with my Seeliologist friend, but it's really cool. I want to know what that says. Although, I did ask a friend, and she said it's too small. She couldn't actually read that. Right. Um, 
let's see, we have more sort of, I mean, we could tell these are all reused assets. Like it's the same thing over and over again, but like the fact that it's so real, it's super cool. And then what do we have over here? Ah, so, okay. So in this game series, you have paintings because of pictures, because it's the dark pictures anthology. Um, so you have pictures that will always give you flashes of like, um, like the premonitions essentially. So it can show you a possible future depending on choices you make. So in this game, because it's set in an ancient setting, they've turned the pictures that are normally hanging on the wall into ancient like like uh, tablets. So here, I'll show you what happens when we click into it. You see tablet, and then... Oh, wow. Premonition. So we get dark, grainy premonition, but then we have cool tablet again. Oh, okay. So cool tablet, cool tablet does uh, scary premonitions. Yes, because it's based off of like until Dawn's uh, totem system where you like have the totem of fortune, danger, loss. Uh, so like based on the color, essentially, you could see like if you got a white totem, you would know this is a totem of fortune. So it's telling you it's showing you like a good outcome, like based on your actions. So they kind of had to strip out so many colors and options because these are the Dark Pictures games are they average between four and six or seven hours so it's meant to be shorter and so like this one i think if you played the whole game through it's like five and a half to six depending on what you do so um they had to strip that out is this the door no that's going to the other door no i don't remember what's in that um but yeah so they stripped out the color system so now you just get a premonition and it's going to show you something that could happen um as a big fan of this game i naturally know kind of where all the things happen now so like i know what that was i know where in the game i know what decisions are not decisions yeah. that trigger it Don't so um that's what happened i went hardcore because i went from being like okay it's not as scary as i thought it was to being like okay with it so um yeah i've played through multiple times and got like every option did every choice um it was intense it was, I got I just, everyone i'm just killed. kind of sitting here on the edge of my seat like what is going to happen yeah you fist. Yeah, there's a certain comfort you in knowing fist. what is coming. <laughs> I don't, so I'm not. I'm I'm not totally comfortable. I'm just kind of like I'm just kind of like white knuckling it right now. What is this? I mean, you'd you'd think that that the guy with the the, the necklace the of skulls you just wouldn't be afraid afraid of anything. Right? I'm like, it's a necklace of bones. It's it reminds really me of that cool. character in a uh, Temple of Doom. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. We'll help each other. All right. Enemy of my enemy. All right. Enemy of my is enemy is my friend. To help each other. Which is a lesson this game will hammer home at so many different points. <laughs> there is always hope. So here we go. Besties together. All right. Let's do it. So, there's nothing much in this room except there. I think there's a statue somewhere of. Ah, yes. Pazuzu. The demon of like plagues and shit. So this is Pazuzu. Yeah. Is he also the? If, if, do I have this right? Is he also a deity of wind? Yes, I think. Is so. he a wind god? Okay, I'm trying to. I'm he's trying like to wind. Remember. Yeah, he's like wind and plagues and sickness and uh, a bunch of other attributes. They have so many. And again, not an expert, but I love this giant statue of him. He's very cool. You see statues of this this version of Pazuzu literally everywhere and then i wanted to know if this was a really like accurate representation of pazuzu so when i was in chicago i went to the former oriental institute and because they have a great little statue of pazuzu in the museum and it's so different their pazuzu is like not like this one at all so this is a, <laughs> this is a very stylized i mean they're not like it's not like wildly different but like there are small details that are very different. Sure. So but again, it's it's trying to be creepy. I see a lot of the snake motif, which has to do mm -hmm. with the underworld. Yeah. Um, at least in at least in ancient Greco-Roman sources. So. Yeah. Yeah. So We're like getting this. getting creepy, sort of underworld <laughs> vibes here. Oh, okay. Over here. Yeah, I'm like I'm interested. I'm like I want to know what you think of. Uh, 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 uh. What? What is happening? What's happening? What What's is happening? it? Dun, 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 dun. This is where you need like the scary music. Uh, well, there is scary music. Like a... Okay. Yeah, the music is very creepy, actually. 
course. That's a sensible thing. I was, yeah, yeah, don't stick around to see, to see what it is. Just run. Run, run, oh! run, 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 run. I run. would barricade the door, maybe, but okay. They didn't barricade the door behind them. That's fine. It, We're they're fine. too busy panicking. Right. They're like okay. way too calm, actually. I would just be screaming in a corner. And uh, yeah, I would be hysterical at this Go point. <laughs> To stand together. To stand no. together. We don't even know what we're fighting. It just looks really scary. Uh-oh. No, we're not going to betray him. Betray. Fight. 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 Always. Don't betray your friend. Yeah. I said, you, you need you need him. You might be a human shield for later. You never know. Uh-oh. My creepy VHS tape. Oh, no. <laughs> Help. Yikes. <laughs> Uh -oh. Okay, that's not going well. Get it! Get him, get him, get him! Ah! My button, where's the button? Oh my god, I'm trying to remember where my button is. Oh my god, these quick times, man. I mean, even though I'm playing on easy, these quick times are still very stressful. Well, sure. Okay. So I'm like really good at quick time events, or I'm terrible at them. There's no in between with me. Right? No, I know. Well,. I would be straight trash at everyone if I played on like difficult. I just know it. There is a nightmare setting, and I'm kind of curious to see how hard that would be. But I'm also like, I really don't want to be responsible for that because I would die in five minutes. <clears throat> oh, goodbye, Corum. You are dead. Yeah, we hardly, we literally hardly knew you. Uh, oh, ooh. oh dear. And that's done. We are dead.